All right, one of the most powerful new features in Betaflight 4.3 is the new presets. Well, today we're gonna check out how to navigate the new presets and even create your own. So getting right into it, we're gonna go right down to the presets tab. On the left here, you have all the different categories of presets. So you have filters, LED modes, so on and so forth, all the way down to tunes. I would say tunes and rates would probably be the most two that you'd probably look for. Not the discount OSD uh, and VTX tables. There would be some other great ones as well. So you can see there's a whole number of VTX tables if you have these specific VTXs that you can just load up the VTX table right from here and you'd be set to go. But hopping into some of the tuning presets here, you can see if I click on that, and you can also search keywords up here. So if you're gonna look in freestyle or five inch or whatnot, and then it will sort out and look for these keywords. You can see people have keywords in their presets. So after you open the preset, there's a couple options here. To apply the preset, you simply hit pick. Obviously, if you wanna close this dialog, you just hit close. On the left here, you have a couple options to see what would go on before you, or what's kind of baked into the preset. And this one here, the show CLI, this will show you exactly what's going to be applied uh, for the preset. But it's going to show you everything. So many of these presets apply the default for, say, for tuning. It's going to apply the defaults for the tuning tab. And then it will apply the preset on top of that just for, it's a little easier for the authors to, uh, to do it that way. Because you know kind of where you're coming from. And you don't have to get, you don't have to do everything in the in the tab. You can only... Uh, put in your preset the actual changes you want to make because you're going to assume you're coming from defaults. So you can click on this and again it will show you everything but it's also going to show you you know it applying all the defaults first so the actual preset part is typically just at the very bottom uh, and it's kind of somewhat difficult to differentiate that but it will show you everything that's going to be going on there uh, including the options so if you do click on some of these options that somebody has you can see what those options would entail you can see the last thing we have here is this uh, 650. So if I go ahead and um, click on this option here for the 4S LiPo, you can see uh, what that's doing. That's actually adding these, uh, these PID values down here below and these slider values down here below as well. If I click on uh, maybe this 6S, then you can see uh, what those would be. So you can kind of differentiate pretty easily what the options are at the very bottom by using this CCLI. The other alternative is to simply just view the preset online. So you can hit view online and that will open up a website. This is the actual preset text itself. Now you can see this is, this is a fairly long preset, but it's much shorter. My presets are shorter than this, um, but it's much shorter than that show CLI because in the CLI, uh, you were actually seeing it do these two things, which is applying the defaults for the tuning and filters tabs uh, within Betaflight. And then it was running through the presets. And then there's the options down below. These are the options. See option one, begin, unchecked. This is the, the 6S LiPo one. So you can go back up. You can say this is the 4S LiPo one. So you can kind of, if you know some of the, the little key terms in here, uh, you can kind of see what's what for what it's going to apply. And finally, you can always hit discussions here, and this takes you directly to the uh, PR that had the pre that was, you know, when the preset was uh, reviewed and accepted and, you know, kind of put into the main repository for Betaflight. And you can see that in here. Now, of course, mileage will vary. Uh, you know, these presets are coming from whomever. I mean, you can submit your own preset. So what you see and how it's crafted, you know, how complicated it is versus not complicated and, and so on and so forth is really going to matter based on the author. Also, how much data and information is in the PR that's going for the preset, uh, it's going to vary as well. I know, for example, in the PRs uh, I'm going to do for the presets I'm adding, I'm going to do screenshots of what's in the preset that's going to be in the PR. So when you hit that discussions button, it would take you and you could actually see the screenshot of what it's going to apply and the changes it's going to make from default, just so you can get a sense of what's in that preset um, before you pick it and before you apply it. Now from here, if the preset is you know, what you want, say I want to do RPM filtering, I wanna use the, this five inch by Superfly, uh, and I wanna have a 6S, and this is my uh, motor KV, and I do have an HD camera, I'm going to go ahead and hit pick. And then there is this warning here about the RPM filtering, that it only works with D-Shot 600 and 300, uh, so you have to have those enabled 
uh, for this preset to work with the RPM filtering. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit agree. I do have the RPM filtering working here. And at this point, it didn't actually apply the preset. It kind of put it in a queue. You can see it's kind of highlighted green here. So you could actually skip over and apply another preset. So I could come over here, for example, and I could go to my rates tab and I could say, oh, well, I wanna do Joshua Bardwell's rates. So I'll go ahead and hit that. And I can see down here, there's, I can either use the beta flight rates, uh, his beta flight rates or the actual rate uh, analog. So basically if I want to use actual rates that are basically the same thing as the beta flight, it's not gonna be exactly the same. I, I would prefer actual rates. So I'm gonna use Joshua Bardwell's actual rates or something that's close to his uh, beta flight rates that are uh, in actual rate format. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit pick. So now that tune is queued up to be applied as a preset. And also these rates are uh, tuned up to be applied as a preset. Now do know that if I go down and now click on somebody else's rates and apply, well, it's gonna do Joshua Bardwell's and then it's gonna do the other person's and the other person's are probably gonna trump whatever Bardwell had. So, you know, you wouldn't wanna be doing it multiple, you know, through multiple things here. Now, if you do click on a, some of these and you just decide you don't want to do it or, or whatnot, you can always hit cancel here and then that would just clear the queue out. So after you hit cancel from there, obviously you can see down here, there is no save and reboot. You could just get out of the tab or if you just hop out of the tab, it's not going to do anything. So clicking on these and hit pick is not apply. It's just picking it to be applied. So again, queuing up that previous tune and then Bardwell's rates again here. Now, if I wanted to accept those both and apply those, I would hit save and reboot. And what that's going to do is apply the tuning preset first and then Bardwell's rates preset on top. Of course, it will go ahead and reboot the flight controller and you can reconnect. And then from here, if you go into the PIDs tab, uh, you'll be able to see what you're getting for the, uh, the preset for the tuning. And then obviously over here, what you're getting for the rates as well from Bardwell rates. And you can see I picked the actual analog. So that's, that's what we got here. Now do know many of the presets for tunes also adjust filters because filters and pit tunes, they're, they're very closely tied to, to each other. So um, that's an okay thing in the presets that authors are putting in. So expect filter changes along with your tuning changes, but you would not expect uh, rate changes with any of the, uh, the tuning presets or filter presets. So those, those things are very disconnected, you know, whatever your rates are. It's the same thing for like, you're not gonna see OSD changes if you apply a, a tuning preset. Just that, just really filters and, uh, and tuning, PID tuning stuff is gonna be uh, closely tied. Many of them have, have both. And on any of these, if you wanna see if it does, uh, obviously, again, you, I would just recommend going into it, hitting view online. Like in this one, it appears it does not because it is just doing a reset to defaults uh, for the tune uh, tab, not for filters. And basically you would look down through here to see if you see any keywords like uh, filtering things. So again, if you don't see any words like filter in here, then uh, you know it's not gonna adjust any filter settings. Now there's another really amazing thing you can do with presets in Betaflight is actually assign your own source. So if you go up to preset sources here, so with this dialogue, you can see that there is two uh, sources in here as of the default. And I added mine here as a tertiary, which we'll talk about here in a second. But the one is the official one that goes through the Betaflight API on the website. Um, you won't see anything, it's really in the back end. But if that would ever go down, then there is this backup one that would take it directly to uh, the repository uh, that the presets are stored in for you know the configurator to communicate with that. So it's so like, that's a big thing. You know, You have to have your computer or phone online for presets. And oh yeah, the presets will work in the Betaflight phone app because that's just a simple build of the configurator. So it's gonna have presets. As long as your phone's online through Wi-Fi or the cell service, you'll have presets. So you should be able to load presets in the field just like you can at your desktop. But if you are wondering what the repository is, uh, you can come into here and uh, you could just search for Betaflight presets and it would come up on GitHub. But uh, here's the actual repository link. Uh, so you could go to that. And if you would uh, be somewhat savvy and fork that repository, then you can actually make a new source. So we'd hit make new source down here. And then you can put in your fork of the repository itself, which a fork is just a copy. So it copies it from 
Betaflight's GitHub account to my GitHub account, and then I can change things and then ask to do a pull request. So that's what pull. I'm asking Betaflight to pull my stuff into the main repository. That's why they call it a pull request. So in there, you can make changes, make your own presets, and then ultimately ask Betaflight to incorporate those in to the official presets that everybody has in the in the main Betaflight community source. Um, but while you're doing uh, your testing and looking at it, or if you just want to have it um, and you don't want to do a pull request back, you can just add your own uh, source here and have your own little copy of presets that you just use on your own. You know, maybe you have uh, presets that you want to create, maybe not so much to share, but just to have for yourself. So as you're setting up a new quad, you can, you know, just click load my OSD, load my rates, load my, you know, this, that, and the other tunes, whatnot. So yeah, it's really handy. It's something, uh, it's a new thing that I don't think anybody else is really doing right now. So if you would want to make your own repository for your own presets, Betaflight presets, the first thing you'd want to do is go to the Betaflight firmware presets repository on GitHub, and you can see the link right here. And I'll drop that down below in the video description. And then with your GitHub account, which if you don't have a GitHub account, you'd need to create one. And with your GitHub account, you would go ahead and then click fork. And I can't click it here. I don't want to click it because I already did this. And it will copy all the files here into your GitHub account uh, to make a repository of your own. And you can see here, now I have a copy of that, uh, the fork of that. So I click into there and it's an exact copy. So at this point, you'd most likely want to get GitHub desktop where you can then get the uh, link here and plug that into there. And then you can start copying your repository down to your computer where you can edit the files, push them back up to your repository using that app. Goes down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a Patreon only video this week about that, going through the process with that from here and also going through the process of how to uh, work with the presets to create and author presets. So if you're interested in that, check out the links down below to the Patreon for that video coming up. After you would have your repository, uh, you can see here with the firmware presets and then the branch, which we would talk about in that video uh, that you would make for your specific presets. Uh, then you would go ahead and plug those into here. And here you can see now you can make active so I can make this branch active or I can make back to the beta flight uh, official repository active or I can have a number like if I have some buddies, things like that, so on and so forth. I can hit OK on this. And now I will just see uh, my presets because I, I what I did is I cleared out all the other ones just because of my own repository here for, for this. Now uh, in here, uh, I guess that's another thing. If you are interested in you know loading my presets, I will drop this link down in the video description below and also this branch name. I am working on these to get these pushed back into the Betaflight official. So you'll see them there soon enough. But um, you don't have to do one PR for each. It, it's going to take a little bit of time, but they are there now as of this video. So here's the link. You can put it in here, uh, add a source, hit make current, and bingo, bango, boom. Here's the presets I have. So just to give you a quick rundown on my presets and what you're going to see either in that or back in the official eventually here. If we slide down through, uh, a lot of the presets from other guys in there so far are really centered around a five inch. There's some six or seven inches. I tried to diversify that a little bit more. Same kind of thing I have on my website, theuavatech.com. So those are Betaflight 4.2 presets. This is where I'll have Betaflight 4.3 and moving forward. Um, but in here we have Whoop, Toothpick, uh, Cine Whoop. Uh, we also have one for Cine Lifters. Uh, so it kind of expanded. I don't have those on the website. So those will be in addition here. I do have the Whoop one, but not Cine Whoop and Cine Lifters. Uh, we have a five inch. Uh, six and seven inch, eight and nine inch here as well. So you can click those. With most of those, there's just one option with, you know, these are built around uh, with an understanding of using 24 kilohertz PWM um, from the ESC to the motor. Uh, but if you're using 48 kilohertz PWM from your ESC to your motor, basically the refresh weight, the higher refresh weight, since the braking force is a little bit uh, lower, uh, you can use that and that uh, adds in a touch of thrust linear to compensate for that. Try to keep it brief uh, with a little description here and then just some motor recommendations for these larger quads because that's where people get burned the most. They just use too low motors and they're not happy with whatever tune they put on it. But if you want to see a little bit more depth on that, hit view online 
And like I said, mine are a little bit simpler. So here you have just the introduction, which we most of that text you already saw already. But you can see here um, just basically uh, changing the gyro filter multiplier, determ filter multiplier, and using the sliders only really with a couple other variables here as well. And that will about do it for uh, getting you kind of honed in. At least, again, presets are glorified defaults, at least close enough for you know there's a lot of variables that i don't know about your quad and nothing beats a custom tune but a preset is trying to at least get you in the ballpark and then uh, i don't have this part on here as of this video but when you do click on the discussions it will take you to the pr which i will have images for of what the preset's going to show again this is just going to the pull request uh, directory itself it'll be uh, prs here to be closed at that point but they will have an image of what the, the preset is gonna change. So you can kind of see what you're gonna get before you pick and apply it, or just know what it changed after you did apply it. And you can kind of go back to that as a reference. The other preset I have in here so far is for the rates. So if you go in, uh, I have just the base freestyle rates, thousand degrees per second, 700 for y'all. That's what I use. Uh, you can see the details of that by clicking view online here. I use basically the lowest amount of center stick sensitivity you can with actual rates. But then when going to look for like an HD or smoother flight characteristics, like when I'm using a Cinewhoop or one a little bit more cinematic, when you're kind of skating through the air kind of scenario, you would apply this option. It gives you a little bit more expo. And then uh, obviously if you're looking to do angle mode with whoops, uh, you go ahead and apply this option with your rates and that would set up angle and horizon strength limits transition so on and so forth add in a touch of expo you know going along with that theme that it's for a whoop indoor you know racing around uh kind of an environment so it kind of combined all the rates in together have the base rates and then just these kind of options uh, depending on what you're looking for okay well that is it as always, huge thanks to Ivan for all his work on coding up presets in this robust manner for Betaflight for all of us to enjoy, and also helping everybody out through understanding uh, the systems and working through the intricacies of it, and specifically helping me out this morning um, with getting that whole uh, repository uh, different source thing set up. I really appreciate his time and I really appreciate the uniqueness. I mean, he's a, like I said before, he's a, you know, a top position racer in the United States in the top brackets and, you know, making the time to give back to the community with uh, something like this and, and as detailed as, as, as this, because this is kind of complex uh, process to, uh, have a robust setup like like he has here because it's you're integrating with APIs and the configurator and then text files and it's it was it's complicated to uh, pull this pull this off. If you do have any questions, please do drop those down in the comments below. And if you have any other presets you'd like to see me add or other guys add into uh, the system or into the repositories, please uh, drop those links down below as well. I do uh, plan on adding like OSD presets just kind of for convenience, just so when I'm in the program, I can just load up my OSD, just clicking the buttons here. You should really, if you get your presets in there, you should be able to really set up a new quad really quick. Um, so yeah, just uh, selfishly, I'll just add those in and if other people want to use them, great. With that, thanks everybody. Hope this helped and I'll see you in the next one.